Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session, the only two formulas you need to know to become a data ninja. I'm Electra Heldy, a senior product manager here at Smartsheet, and I'm joined today by the amazing Lance Merkin, our lead senior customer success manager. Lance was Hi, my Electra. Hi, thank you so much for coming today, Lance. Lance was my uh, mentor in a former life when I was on the customer success team. He's one of my very favorite people. <laughs> Our, um, he's our resident formula expert, both internally and with our customers. And for my fun fact about Lance, he's like a really super serious scuba diver. Mm -hmm. His vacation adventures put mine to shame. So thank you so much, Lance, for being here with us. Yeah, you bet. Uh, maybe I should use this as, a, as a, a segue to say, are you ready to dive into some formulas? Almost ready. Let's talk a little bit about this legal. I'll pause for a moment. This session may contain uh, forward-looking statements and any trademarks we come across in this presentation are not endorsements. So our goal today in this session is we want to explore how to use the VLOOKUP formula. We want to talk about how to use index match and more than anything, we want to gain a better understanding around which formula to use when and what the benefits are of each. We do have our Smartsheet team standing by to help answer questions as we go. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat box and we'll answer as we go. So Lance, our customers this year from Gage got to vote on which sessions they wanted to see. And this was our number one most voted session. No pressure. Oh yeah, no, no, <laughs> none, none, none taken. Uh, I thought I would I would show you all what we do. So in customer success, one thing uh, that we're in charge of is our, our number one goal is to make sure our customers are getting the most out of Smartsheet. And one of the ways that we do that is we try and figure out how our customers are using Smartsheet. So we call these use cases. And the example I want to show you, Electra, is how we're tracking time in use cases and how I need to figure out what regions, which one of our offices, we have four locations. We have our, our Bellevue, Seattle location, Sydney. Uh, we also have our location in Boston and Edinburgh. And so I'm kind of tasked with how much time we're spending collecting use cases across these offices. So let me, let me uh, I'll, I'll kind of dive in and, and show you what I'm talking about right there. Uh, you ready to see what I, what I got here? I'm so ready. So the idea is we have these worldwide offices, there's customer success folks in each office, and you're tasked with figuring out how much each office is spending. And so we're associating each like line item per customer success individual with their location. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So let me just show you the sheet that I have up as an example. Um, right here is a shortened version of all of us in customer success over here at Smartsheet. And so we're using forms to collect this information. And so we're trying to figure out how many hours we're spending uh, per person who's entering this information on a form. Now, in order for me to figure out what, how much we're spending on, uh, at, per office, I need to find out where these employees work at. So... Over here, I have an employee list. There's only four that I put on here to make it straightforward. But this list shows me where everyone works out of. And so what I'd love to do is take this information and bring it back into here. Now, there's two ways to do this. And so I'll show you the first way, which is kind of might be familiar to some of you. Uh, we'll use a vertical lookup function where we grab information from here reference it on another sheet and bring it back in here. It might be easier if I if I combine both of these temporarily into one area right oh. here. So here, I just wanna show you that I wanna be able to look up where Vib works by referencing this range. Now I've showed you two sheets, but let me just show you how we do it over here on just one simple area. So I'm gonna double click in here and I'm gonna type in equals VLOOKUP. And it's gonna walk me through what it needs. So the first thing in yellow is it's asking, what are we looking up? So we're looking up Vib right here. He works out of our Sydney office. And then I'm gonna put a comma right next to it to go on to the next section that the formula is asking for. The next section is, well, where's the table that contains this information? And that's this area right here. So I'm gonna highlight this whole area I'll do in real life, if we were doing, if we were pulling from a different sheet, we would click that reference a different, another sheet, right? 
Yeah. In fact, when we're done with this, I'm going to, I'm going to bring it back to the whole big sheet here. So Perfect. you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so if I select comma again, the next piece of information it needs to know is what column is it going to pull back? And it's that fourth column that contains the offices. So if I'm gonna type in the number four right here, and then finally, a best practice is always typing false. 90% of the time you wanna do this because false says, I don't wanna look up a close match. I wanted to look up an exact or nothing match. So it's, there's these four pieces. We're looking up the person right over here. Where's that range? We're bringing back the fourth column and we only want exact matches. Makes sense so far. So if I hit enter right here, uh, it looked up and it was able to tell me, it looked down, saw Viv and brought across Sydney. So that is how a V lookup works. Now, there might be times on a large list uh, where you might encounter some situations that could cause this formula to break in certain situations. For instance, if I was to delete this column in here mm -hmm. uh, or delete this, I would have to rewrite my formula if I moved and columns around. And that's because the VLOOKUP is looking for its location within the table, right? It's not looking at the specific column, it's looking for in relationship to the, to the table as a whole. Is that right? Correct. And so if you foresee yourself doing that, there's a few, there's another option that we're gonna talk about. If there's anybody who's moving columns around or uh, another reason why we might wanna use this other option is I'm using up all cell links, all 16 of these cell links, when in reality, I only am interested in what's in this column and what's in this column. I don't wanna waste all these cells. On a huge sheet with over 100,000 cells, that could be an issue. And so this next way I'm gonna show you is it won't use any of these other areas. And finally, a vertical lookup is for looking things up vertically. Maybe we might have something where we're looking up things horizontally. Either of those scenarios, what we wanna do instead is use what we call an index and match. And you might've heard an index and match, but it's actually two formulas put together. So to see how that works, I'm gonna go here and go into sitting, and I'm gonna get rid of this formula altogether. I wanna show you what happens on, a, on an index and match. Let's just start with what does a match do? So I'm gonna type in match. And I'm gonna still look for VIB right here, but it just needs to know where is the range that VIB is in. And similar to the VLOOKUP, we don't need to do, I don't want exact, I want an exact match, not an approximate or close match, right? So if I do this right, I'm getting the number two because that's telling me that VIB is second on this list. Now, what I can do is I can pair this match function with the index function, which is the sister to this. And that an index function just wants to know what's the range and what number do you want me to return? So if I tell an index function, look at this range and bring me back the two, it'll show me Sydney. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here. We know a match is bringing us back to, but now in baby steps, let's go ahead and type in index in front of this and an open parentheses. And for the index function, it's asking where is that index range? Well, here, let me click on that index range right here. And if I do comma, it's asking me, well, what row are we returning on that index? Well, this match function is telling us it's returning two. So if I was to close this up right here and hit enter, it'll tell do the exact same thing a VLOOKUP does. Only difference now is, we're not using any of this area right here and I can move columns around and this is a little bit more hardy than a VLOOKUP. So it's a it's another way to do a, a similar thing. Any questions? You, yeah. Well, the way that you approach this, I just wanna call out, this is really the Lance Merkin secret sauce to authoring successful formulas. You did the match piece first and you made sure that it functioned before you added index. And I can't tell you how many times when I was authoring complex solutions, I went to you like, this doesn't work. And we went through piece by piece and taking that little bit of extra time to make sure each piece worked, made it so that we could, so that I could have done it by myself. If I just slowed down and done it piece by piece, I could have gotten that working. 
Yeah, I, I really, you know, uh, appreciate that, Electra. It's, I, I always, if you're doing any kind of sophisticated formulas of adding ifs and thens or index and matches, it's always nice to start off small and work your way bigger. That way you can confirm that every piece of it is working properly. Mm -hmm. Now, with what we know so far, let's go ahead and do exactly this index and match, but this time we're gonna go back to the sheet that I need to pull it in. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to, right here and i'm going to start with what i wanted to start uh when we did that match so let's just start with the match and now it's asking for the search value which is the employee name is what i want to do and if i do comma this time it's asking for the range but a range that we're looking for is on a different sheet so let's go ahead and reference another sheet i'll, I'll click on this link right here and now on this link if I get into here, we can go look at the employee list. It's always a best practice to name the range. I'll call this the employee range so I can remember it for repeated use potentially down the road, employee range. And I could say it's just gonna be these four right here, but this list can grow or shrink. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna click the whole column right here. It highlights the whole column. Now, if I click insert reference in the lower right, I can then, move on to do the zero word. That's the piece that I only want an exact match. So I'll hit enter. And this tells me that Lance is the first one on the list. I could go down here a few just to see so you can see what's going on. So I can see Tony is the fourth one and whatnot. And if you recall, let's go back up into this one and we're gonna encapsulate it into that index. So the match part's working. Now it's time to do the index around it. So I'll type in index. The range is on another sheet. So let's go find that index range. So I'll click on reference another sheet. And this time I'm gonna call this, um, we'll call this the office range. Maybe that might be good to know range right here. And I'll select the whole column. And then I'll click on insert reference in the lower right here, this blue button. Now, it put that in there, but I'm gonna make sure that that's separated by a comma. And this match that's returning that number is that piece that we wanted, that, that one, two, four, and I'm just gonna encapsulate that and I'll hit enter. So let's go okay. down straight with that. What do you think? So good, and now if you want, you can use a, uh, like a parent formula or something to do a count if, figure out how many folks you, how many hours are being, captured in each location and it's and it's hardy enough so that if things change over the time it's still going to find that same info for you yeah that's exactly right um and just to kind of recap it another way to is, is to visualize it so the v lookup what we were doing before is is the first part we're looking up the person the second we're we're bringing in the entire range on this example i was bringing in the third column and then we're saying false so it's just a little visual tool to remember but now, if we do that index and match, you notice not as much is being used. We're, we're bringing in the index. We're still looking up VIB. And you can see the ranges that we're bringing back right here. So it kind of gives you an idea of the difference of how they're used. Awesome. So it sounds like VLOOKUP is a great quick and easy tool to get a quick answer right? Like you, you can just throw it in there. It's easy to type. You can get your answer and move on. If you're looking for something that's going to withstand the test of time, index match is the way to go. Absolutely. You got it. You're spot on with that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lance, so much for walking us through this today. Before we go, I wanted to share a couple of handy resources with you. If you'd like to explore more and dig into our Engage Brain Boosts, we do have one for formulas. It's activity-based learning available to all Engage participants. For those who are looking for a little refresher on how on some of the formula basics and getting started, our Learning Center is an amazing resource to check out. And if you are a formula user and haven't checked out our formulas and functions section within our Smartsheet community, please do. It's an amazing resource for formula enthusiasts and newbies alike where you can get ideas and ask questions. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Bye-bye. Bye, thanks Electra.